Um, we are one of the seven sisters. we have heard from a couple of my other sisters out there as well. Um, we are the furthest south, so um, our weather's a little bit milder than our northern New England sisters. Um, we're smaller. We've got about 1,300 undergraduates. Um, and coming from all over the world, about 22% of our students are um, coming from outside the U.S. So it's a pretty substantial number of, of students that are international. Um, our students, honestly, are not necessarily looking at us because we're a women's college. I, I, and I think that may be true for some of our other sisters as well, that students, um, I'm gonna see if I can pause this in some way. Let's scroll through. Um, many of our students are not necessarily looking for women's colleges. Most of our students go to co-ed high schools. Um, the students that tend to look at us are looking at us in, in primarily because we're a liberal arts and science college. That's sort of the environment that they're looking for. And, um, and the fact that we're a women's college may or may not be on their radar. Um, I think when you talk with students who are current students and our alums, they will tell you categorically the fact that it was a women's college was one of the most important parts of the entire experience. So there's something really transformational that, that happens for our students. And so I did want to highlight about how it's sort of different when you're 17 or 18 year olds thinking about college to sort of once you're there and through. Um, how incredibly, incredibly transformational it is for our students. Um, as I mentioned, we're one of the, the smaller schools, um, um, but a couple of unique things about us, because I think one of the most frequent questions I tend to get is how are each of the women's colleges different than one another? And we have a lot in common, clearly, but, um, but we each have our own personality. Um, and one of the ways that Bryn Mawr is different is that we are um, right outside of a big city. So that's that's one thing that we're right outside of a big city, outside the city of Philadelphia, 25 minutes and you're right in downtown Philadelphia. And we um, are part of a consortium of four schools. Students take classes at all of these four schools. So Bryn Mawr, Haverford College, Swarthmore College, and the University of Pennsylvania. You can see our first, um, our slide there, a beautiful slide of Bryn Mawr, some facts and figures about us, as I mentioned, um, in terms of our size, sort of where we're located, et cetera. And I was talking also about our location, which is, is pretty unique. Um, right outside of Philadelphia, um, the tiny little red dots on that map, um, we'll show you the other colleges are in our consortium, Bryn Mawr, Haverford, Swarthmore, and the University of Pennsylvania. There are thousands of cross registrations every single semester. So you do not need to be a math major <laughs> to figure out what is going on here. Haverford and Bryn Mawr, we share all of our classes. Our students can major at Haverford and Haverford students can major at Bryn Mawr, which I've never heard of before. That's very unusual. Um, even if we have a major, you can still be a major at Haverford and vice versa. So for example, um, if maybe there's a Haverford student who wants to do research about some small particular worm in our biology labs that our faculty are focusing on, that student can come to Bryn Mawr and be a biology major at Bryn Mawr. And the reverse is true. So that's very unusual how academically seamless it is between the two schools. Um, so you don't have to take another class at another campus, but you probably will. Um, it's so academically easy to, to do that. The University of Pennsylvania is obviously a very different kind of school than the other three small colleges, um, but a tremendous resource. Um, we have some collaborative programs with Penn, including engineering. Um, and so students, instead of getting two bachelors, one in arts and one in engineering, our students can pursue their bachelors at Bryn Mawr and go right through to get, in five years, a master's of engineering at Penn. So that's a really great resource and just an example of how our students use that resource. 
we talk about the connections with all the other schools, the one very firm line we have between the schools is actually athletics. <laughs> you cannot play for someone else's team. So we have um, varsity athletics on campus. Our students are very proud, um, great history. Our, the, one of our very first athletics directors was Constance Appleby, who brought um, field hockey to the United States. So she's, she's in, our, in our realm. Students not only are coming from all over the world, but pursue opportunities all over the world. This slide kind of highlights a few of the, um, the programs that, that we have and some various different places our students have been. One program in particular I wanted to highlight is um, the program called 360 Degrees. And this is a, a, a program that during one of your semesters, if, if you choose to participate, three of probably the four of your classes will um, be focused around a particular theme or topic or question. Um, and there's always an experiential learning component to it as well. So the one example I like to use is one of the 360 topics was contemplative traditions. So that was the title. The three classes that students took in this cluster, one was taught by a, an East Asian studies professor, one was taught by a psychology professor, and one was taught by a chemistry professor. So contemplation, meditation, what does that look like in a culture? What does that look like in your brain? And then they went to Japan and looked at it, what it looks like in Japan. So for two weeks, um, students and, the, and the, um, the three faculty go to Japan and sort of explore what, what contemplative traditions look like in a particular place. We've had programs that have gone to Cuba, to, um, to Spain, and have looked at migration and food. Uh, we have one, one program that takes the Trans-Siberian Railroad from Russia to China. So that's a pretty interesting one as well. So all sorts of different, you know, opportunities for students who either want to spend a full semester abroad or with this program, you can still be based at home base, still have an abroad experience um, and, and sort of be with a small cluster of, of, of students in very interdisciplinary kind of way. Our students are pursuing various different majors, various different um, careers when they graduate. Almost a third of our students uh, pursue a major in math or science, which is I think two and a half times the national average. Mm -hmm. So not to say that you can't do STEM at a co-ed institution, you of course can, but at Bryn Mawr, one out of three of your female friends is also studying math and science. And that is really different than it might be at a co-ed institution when you're surrounded by these peers and role models and, you know, hearing about various opportunities and paths to career and beyond. Um, so that that's another little kind of um, signature, I guess, of a women's college education and the kinds of things that our students go on to do. Um, We've had students definitely pursue business. Um, you won't find that on our list of majors, but that is one of the top fields that our students pursue right once they graduate from Bryn Mawr. Um, many of them may be economics majors, um, but they pursue business in a lot of different realms. Um, so it's, I think that's a sort of telltale sign of how much you can do and how impressive it, I think it really is with a liberal arts and science education that you don't ne necessarily need to study one thing, but so many of our students go into professional fields such as business, medicine, law, engineering, etc. The last thing I guess I'll, I'll end with is um, some of our traditions on campus and lots of schools have have traditions and events and celebrations and things that happen during during the year they're pretty special and serious at, at Bryn Mawr some are silly some are serious some are secret um, but this snapshot will give you an idea of some of those kinds of traditions um, I'm not going to say too much about them but you can certainly contact me and I can tell you more about them 
um, to, but every Bryn Mawr alum will think about these traditions and her experience with them um, for the rest of her life, really for the rest of her life and the connections that you make with students on campus that do extend for the rest of your life. And as we've seen you know, today too, also the connection with other women's college graduates. And that connection is, is really with you for the rest of your life as well. So I will end there um, with a happy graduate um, and happy to entertain questions if, if there are. So apologies for the earlier slide uh, debacle, but hopefully this is giving you a good picture of Bryn Mawr and do check out the pictures on the web. Everybody says we look like Harry Potter's Hogwarts. Don't take my word for it. Do some Googling. It really does, the campus really does look like that. I guess I get to ask the questions again. I wanted to add something about Bryn Mawr because it may not be as well known amongst Canadians, but when I was at a women's college years and years ago, and they didn't have the US News and Rep World Report rankings, uh, one came out in Life Magazine, this will be the early 60s, and it ranked Bryn Mawr ahead of Harvard, uh, owing to the criteria that they used to use. And that included the number of PhDs yes. actually teaching the undergraduates, oh. as well as volumes in the library. I can't remember all the criteria. Oh. Bryn Mawr has always had a solidly, my mother used to call it blue stocking, but highly intellectual <laughs> background. My two friends I used to teach with at Branksome, that's what they were, extremely brilliant women, mm -hmm. as were the two that I have sent from Toronto to Bryn Mawr. And my question is, uh, for those who worry that uh, a women's college will be like uh, a girls' boarding school, oh. are the Bryn Mawr women still allowed to live in the Haverford dorms if they want? Yes, <laughs> yes. If they want I, to share their DNA and the secret. I would men. say if, if a student is looking for an exclusively women's community, Bryn Mawr is not the place. <laughs> Meaning, because of the consortium that I mentioned earlier, and especially Haverford, every single day there are hundreds of Haverford students at Bryn Mawr and vice versa. So you will have men in your classes, you will have men in the dorms, you will have men in the science labs and in the dining halls. They love our food. Um, you technically can be on the other campus, um, but interestingly, our dorms are much better <laughs> than Haverford's. Um, there's a kind of a sibling rivalry there, love and hate with, uh, with or love and rivalry, I would say, with, with Haverford. So I think we battle back and forth who's got the best dorms and who's got the best food. So our students are particularly happy with, uh, with, with where they are. And I'll just ask one more question. I see that Dan's eager to get going. Um, Bryn Mawr has uh, many notable women alumni. Would you be willing to name at least two that I know of? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, yeah, so well, a couple. Um, one, one of our most famous alums because she's been in Hollywood um, is Catherine Hepburn. Um, who, and her mother also went to Bryn Mawr and was quite a suffragette um, in her time. So those are two right there that you may know of. Um, the first Nobel, female Nobel Peace Prize winner, Emily Balsh, also went to Bryn Mawr. Um, the first woman to discover that the X and Y chromosome determined sex also went to Bryn Mawr. So we have a, a quite a few, as you mentioned before, sort of a academic powerhouses, I think, um, that we count them on our alums. If I may add, what, may add one of my favorites is Martha Gellhorn, uh, mm -hmm. who was such a notable war correspondent. Mm -hmm. Now, the first I female president of Harvard, also a Bryn Mawr graduate. The list goes on. 